Hey guys, this is Drax, back with an exciting update on Star Wars Battlefront 2, as the latest patch known as Night on Endor has released today, giving us the new limited time Ewok hunt mode, some new skins to use, and we can finally convert our crafting parts to skill points. There's also been some much needed changes to gameplay to make it smoother and more enjoyable, so let's take a look at the additions and changes. Here we have to start with the new Ewok hunt mode. In the dead of night on Endor you play as either a stormtrooper or an Ewok. Most of the time it will be a stormtrooper as only two Ewoks are chosen at the start of each round. As a stormtrooper you need to stay alive and wait for extraction. Stormtroopers come as standard with a flashlight that runs out fairly often but look around the map a bit and you'll find a case with improved weapon, a flashlight that you can keep on all the time, an incendiary imploder. That should help you stay alive. If you are killed at any time by the Ewoks you then become one, similar to some infection game modes you may have played before. When playing as an Ewok, your main weapon is your spear, but you also have some great little abilities that help you take down the stormtroopers with ease. Wisties are these little creatures that burst out of their pouch on impact, disrupting and burning stormtroopers, my favourite ability so far. Hunter's Instinct allows you as Ewoks to find your targets easier by outlining the stormtroopers in red, and the Valiant Horn after being blown gives you damage resistance and better attacks for a short period of time. You can even jump down on stormtroopers using your spear and impale them, but it takes good timing. I didn't manage to do it in the few games I've played so far, but maybe I'll get one in the stream later. A bonus tip is to use the little holes at the bottom of the trees to get back into the treetops. This gets you back into position for those attacks from above. With that combination of abilities and map design, it's quite a lot of fun hunting stormtroopers as they fear for their lives. To win as Ewoks, you simply have to eliminate all the stormtroopers before they extract. So far I am liking this game mode a lot, it's good credits and it's different than anything else we had in game, so that's a plus from me. Let me know your thoughts on this new Ewok hunt mode in the comments. Next up skins have arrived for the classes and heroes as well, so let's take a look. Starting with the troopers, we do have skins for the Rebels, Resistance, Empire and First Order. However, the only class getting skins for each faction is the Officer. The rest only have skins for the Resistance and the Rebel Alliance so far. I'd expect them to add more to the other classes in the near future. Currently, the most expensive skins for these classes are the rare ones costing either 20,000 credits or 500 crystals. Yes, the monetization system is now back in the game, and 500 crystals will set you back around $5 or £3.59 in my money. To purchase, you just simply go into the appearance menu, select the skin and click the unlock button on your preferred payment option. Here I have a fair amount of credits, so I purchased the Twi'lek skin for my resistance specialist and a wiki skin for my rebel heavy. As said before, no clone or droid skins, but I expect to see those in the near future as well. Moving on to the hero skins that also came in with the update, we got Wounded Chewbacca with an arm patch, that one is pretty basic. We got Scarred Kylo Ren with Patch Over his Scar, came with no capes so that's better than expected, I think a lot of people would be happy with that one. Administrator Lando, best bin as seen before. Commander Iden with no helmet, that looks pretty good, maybe slightly overpriced though. Hooded Yoda with a pulled up hood with his ears poking out the sides, there's a nice one there. Endor Leia, probably my favourite skin for Leia so far. Endor Han, which actually comes with his long jacket coat, I like that one. And finally Rey in her Octo outfit, my favourite skin for the heroes in this patch. Some of these cost very little at only 5,000 credits, but others such as the epic skins will set you back either 40,000 credits or 1,000 crystals. A fair price, so I'll be interested to see what those legendary skins cost in the future. Let me know what you guys think of the skins that we have so far in the comments. Next, let's move on to crafting part conversion. I have to say the devs have made it nice and easy for us to convert our crafting parts into skill points as you simply click this button. It then converts 40 crafting parts to one skill point on any chosen class, hero or vehicle. I got a load of crafting parts to convert so I expect to max out most things with this update. What a difference from the old progression where it was such a struggle. Moving on, let's take a look at the hero changes and fixes, and here I just want to concentrate on the more important ones, starting with Iden Versio. So Iden's stun droid ability was shocking twice, with 0.5 seconds with a 1.3 second delay in between. They said the intent was to give the chance for the target to roll away from the second stun and provide some skill reward, but that wasn't working and that was confusing a lot of people. So what they did is removed Iden's double stun and increased the basic stun duration from 
0.5 to 0.9 seconds. And I've tested it out a bit and that's actually quite a short stun in comparison to the old one. So you're going to notice that a lot if you mained the item before. Bosk has had his red scope glint removed when using his Rowby and he fixed the detonation time on his Predator Instinct grenades. Darth Maul, as we know, his saber throw was broke. Well, this ability should now be more reliable than ever and will connect properly with its target. Also, the Fool Me Once star card now applies the proper bonuses, so that's great. We can use more to his full potential once again. Darth Vader has had several star cards and an ability fixed. Leia's High Spirit card will now work as intended because it was actually regenerating bonus health before, so that should now be sorted. Palpatine's Growing Darkness star card will now work properly with his Dark Aura. And they fixed an issue for Phasma where the last staff strike was not dealing proper damage. I noticed this a few times so I'm glad that is fixed now. Talking about Phasma and other melee attacks such as lightsaber strikes, they've improved melee combat responsiveness for all melee attacks including lightsabers. Timing for effects, audio, camera shake and the application of damage have been closer aligned to the expected moment of impact to make the melee combat experience feel tighter. I've just been messing around a bit in arcade but it does feel a fair bit smoother, more like it did back in the beta. Next up we have map changes and I won't go through all the changes in this one as it mostly is just fixes but the few that stand out to me are Camino, where they've improved the spawn safety for both attackers and defenders in phase 2 and they've tweaked the spawn distance in phase 3. Takadana, the phase 1 ATST will now become available after 60 reinforcements have been used and they said they want this to be a boost if the first order is struggling, not something to be used to create an early advantage. They've also tweaked the attacker spawn distance in phase 3. On half they've increased the AT-80 walker health and on the boo they've added the dusk time setting. For the final part of this video we have some general changes and starting with heroes versus villains they've added a warning sound when you become the target. Quite often I see people become the target and not quite realise so now there's a sound as well to make sure that you know that you are the target. They've also added one of the best changes to date and this is quite a simple one to apply to all multiplayer matches. They've added a 100 credit win bonus for players who win around in multiplayer so winning is going to be so much more important in game now if you want to get those extra 100 credits. There are a ton of other fixes but I just wanted to highlight some that I felt were more important for this video. I'm going to be going live in a bit with some Ewok Hunt so feel free to join me in the stream. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, let me know what you think of the latest patch in the comments. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.